What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a hardware overview for you on an unnamed, unannounced Nokia prototype presumed to be the upcoming N9. What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a hardware overview for you on an unnamed, unannounced Nokia prototype presumed to be the upcoming N9. So late last week, the folks at Negri Electronics pulled back the veil, so to speak, and revealed this phone to the world. Uh, they provided it to me for a very short period of time to give you a more thorough overview of the hardware and software that's on this. Uh, for all of your unlocked cell phone needs, be sure to check out Negri Electronics. A link to them will be in the sidebar. Uh, great deals and just good people to work with. So let's go ahead and talk about specs. This thing is loaded with North American 3G bands, so you will get support for 850 and 1900. Uh, presumably, it has Nokia's NHD display, giving it a resolution of 640 by 360. Now sort of interestingly, it is running Symbian S60, the touchscreen edition, uh, which Nokia said won't make its way onto any more N-series devices. So if this is indeed the N9, uh, we presumably see me go on it by the time it's shipped. However, it may not be the N9. Uh, it's got that CO in the upper left-hand corner, meaning it may very well be a C-series device, in which case we could see uh, Symbian S60 on it. It's got a four inch capacitor touchscreen, which is multi-touch enabled. Pinch and zoom works very well on the web browser, which we'll see in an upcoming video. Let's talk about what else we got on the phone. So the front here, you've got a, I believe a VGA resolution camera with a single LED flash. However, there's an open spot next to that LED. So this may actually have dual LED flashes in the front uh, by the time it ships. On the back of the device, we are looking at an 8 megapixel camera with dual LED flash. Uh, clearly, this is a prototype phone. Uh, the back is metal. We've got sort of some soft plastic off on the side. It feels very solid and very well built. And let's talk a bit more about some of the specs and what the hardware looks like. On the left hand side of the phone, you've got a lock button, so what you can use to lock or unlock the phone. On the right hand side, you've got sort of an interesting volume toggle. Slide that up and down to adjust your volume. You've got your expansion card right here, which I thought for a while was actually a physical button, but it's not. And you've got a dedicated camera button right there. Just a microphone and lanyard port on the bottom. Speaker on the front, that's not a button. On the top, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. We've got a power and another lock button. And underneath this guy, we've got your micro USB port and HDMI out. Uh, something kind of neat and we're trying to see with a lot more phones. Uh, this is a slider with a sort of unique slider mechanism, so let me show that to you. Phone slides right out. It sort of feels very solid when it does it as well. And you get sort of that ergonomic raise, something we saw on the tilt uh, a while ago. And the keyboard is actually very easy to use. The keys are raised, there's a lot of tactile feedback. Uh, clearly this is not a uh, North American keyboard. There's some letters on there which I've never seen before. Uh, presumably they are uh, Finnish. Uh, so also we look at the phone here, I've uh, got a very large space bar. Uh, the period is right next to it, but that period doesn't actually work. You've got your four-way navigation keys here. Uh, you've got a nice sort of three-row QWERTY keypad. The numbers are inlaid on the top row. Uh, it is a capacitive touchscreen. The touchscreen is actually much more responsive than I thought it was going to be and worked pretty well. Uh, the slider mechanism is interesting in itself. It's got sort of this raised hinge that comes up. So when the phone goes down, it slides back into place and it snaps up when you push on it. So it is indeed, I uh, have a sort of a spring-loaded feel to it. Do that from the side so you can see what that looks like. So moving right along, and sure there's a lot of things to talk about this phone, uh, it's very thin. And for a QWERTY phone, that's certainly a nice addition. So we've seen some, some thicker uh, QWERTY phones. It almost has the same footprint as a lot of Slate phones. Let me bring in some of its competitors and some other phones you might be familiar with to sort of get a sense as to what this thing would actually look like in your hand and in your pocket. So four inch touchscreen is sort of a unique size. Let's take a look at the little bit larger uh, Evo 4G. Even stack on top of each other. There's not that much of a difference. And from a thickness standpoint, there's not much there as well. Uh, so next, we've got the iPhone 4. And stack on top of each other. They look very close uh, size-wise. There's really not that much difference. And thickness standpoint, this is where you really start to appreciate how thin this is for having a full QWERTY keyboard. And uh, sort of the last device I'll bring in, the iPhone 3GS, for the outgoing model similar to what the 4 looks like, which almost looks downright fat compared to this N9 prototype, or presumed N9 prototype. 
So in an upcoming video, we're going to talk a bit more about the software that's on here. Uh, it is loaded, as I mentioned, with the Symbian S60 touchscreen edition. Uh, we do have multi-touch and is a capacitive touchscreen. And it seems to work relatively well, actually. Uh, the touchscreen is very well calibrated. It makes me think that perhaps we will see S60 shipping on this. Uh, but again, a lot can change by the time this is shipped and announced. So anyway, guys, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. For all your tech news, be sure to check out the website, Techno